So I'm glad you brought up about the uh, the talent feedback thing because that is that is number one of the number one thing I hear from especially new talent who haven't necessarily won their first job yet and they're throwing auditions at the wall and they just feel like they maybe get a like and so many new talent are basing everything they do on how many likes they get. And I mean, as like, I, I don't, I, I tend to throw auditions at the wall and, and never look back. Like, I don't even know if I get likes or anything. I just kind of move on. And if I get a job, it's a nice surprise. But mm -hmm. when you are starting out and looking for any kind of data point to improve your performance, the, the P2Ps aren't really much help because the, it is literally, the, there's just no data coming back at you, which is why things like Grave for the Brain and, and coaches um, are so important to give that feedback and, and make sure people are improving. Is there a way to perhaps like gamify it for clients so that they're rewarded for when they do give feedback? Um, and I've done casting. I know how exhausting it is when you get like 80 you know, auditions to listen through. It takes mm -hmm. a long time just to listen to them, let alone give feedback. But if, I don't know, they were able to give spot feedback. I'm sure you've done work on this to see how feasible it is and whether it's possible. Yeah, we've tried, we've tried a few things. Um, you know, and one uh, in particular is we actually called it audition feedback is when they're going through, <clears throat> if they if they add to a short list or they click hide to kind of remove it from view, it's like either popping up uh, a window that says, oh, well, you know, and, and it has to be very um, objective feedback because mm -hmm. as soon as it's mm -hmm. subjective, then it's like the client doesn't want to have to rationalize or explain why Toby mm -hmm. they loved or didn't like your voice for this. You know what I mean? They're just they just feel like they're opening themselves up. No one wants to kind of write the thanks but no thanks letter if you know what yeah. i'm saying yeah. so i think there's the hesitation from client uh from the client to do so and so the audition feedback was like i hear plosives too much sibilance um mm. background noise uh noise floor reflective space like it was things that hopefully the client could hear uh when they're going through uh through those auditions um but the uptick of that was like a, it was like 0.1% of people even for like of jobs even like got a single audition feedback we're like this is this is kind of becoming one of those pebbles in the shoe to to for the client who's just like can I please just hire the talent and kind of get on with it mm -hmm. so i think we've concluded that you're right gravy for the brain other coaching facilities and individual coaches are really the best channel uh, in our experience to get that personalized one-on-one -on -one feedback. Um, and a, a one way to do that would be downloading an audition. You know, you know, if the client's got a job posting, if it's not confidential and, you know, show, show your coach, here's the job, here's my audition, how might I Im improve? Mm. And for a while, we actually had an on-site uh, audio engineer who would in effect do this, you know, pro bono uh, at voices. And the number one thing that, that made the difference in the audio quality is literally just, I wouldn't resort to like a normalizing, but it was literally just the perception that clients perceive loud auditions to be better quality, rightly or wrongly. It's just, you're not competitive. If you, if you sound like this and you're just whispering and I can barely hear you, you know, versus mm -hmm you know, literally leaning in to the microphone can be the difference between that presence that's sounding. Now, I'm not advocating that I'm a, I'm a coach or, you know, anything, but like, that's what we found was this perception of sound loudness was actually what clients viewed as like better quality versus not so good quality. So that could be using a compressor. It could be making sure you have a limiter on there so you're not you know, cracking out. And it could be just working the mic a little bit closer to give it a little bit more of an intimate read that has more presence.